Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. My name is Jana Peel. I'm CEO of Intelligence Squared, and I'm absolutely thrilled to be here on the very kind invitation of Steffi Czerny, Hans Ulrich Oberst, and the Borda and DLD teams. Now, it's my first time at DLD. I'm a newbie, and I'm very excited to have made the break from Davos. Clearly, there is great opportunity for self-expression through footwear here. <laughs> The only thing more colorful than the sneakers that I'm shamelessly flaunting on the stage are my two speakers, who you'll hear more from. Uh, they have indeed collaborated on these uh, Adidas Independent Italia ZX Flux trainers, but that's just the beginning of the amazing collaboration through which they're really redefining the future of customization and so many other things. Lapo Elkan and Sam Handy are in their own right two amazing and creative individual forces. They're awesome. also redefining this idea that will suggest Hans Ulrich patented about how one and one can equal 11 and cross-contamination can really lead to the most exciting things. Lapo needs very little introduction. He is the chairman and founder of Italia Independent Group, which includes independent ideas. He is known for challenging preconceptions, uh, breaking barriers. He's probably the only man on his CV to boast being in the Fashion Hall of Fame from Vanity Fair, the Automotive Hall of Fame, and one-time employer Henry Kissinger as well. Now, Lapo is, of course, uh, got the automotive industry in his blood, and in the past, he's driven customization for Fiat, for Ferrari. He is now bringing that amazing taste and flair for innovation to his Garage Italia Customs Venture, which can customize your car, your bike, your plane, your boat in Love Parade or in much more uh, customized ways. As Hans Ulrich mentioned, Sam Handy is also an amazing innovator and reinventor. He is the creative director of Adidas Football at the moment, but from arriving at Adidas in 2009 to reinvent Adidas Original, I think he is largely responsible for the fact that we had this great revival of Stan Smith's and so many other amazing brands. Now, we've all just arrived here, of course, for DLD as the main attraction, but it seems you've already been here for a couple of days sharing your love of speed and fashion and color and creativity. Maybe Sam can kick off by telling us what's been keeping you and Lapo busy for the past couple of days. Uh, obviously, Lapo and I have been spending time comparing outfits and, and swapping style tips. I try and pick up as many style tips from Lapo as possible when I meet him. Always very intimidated to figure out what I'm going to put on in the morning when I'm going to be sat on a stage. But um, yeah, we've been having some great times talking to each other about potential future collaborations, how we're inspiring each other, I think, to to create new projects and, and build new things. I think, like you said, we had a, a project last year where we built some great footwear together and, and pushed the boundaries of what Adidas Originals could do at that time with inspiration from, from Laps. But it's leading us onto lots and lots more projects and really seeing where things can go. And of course, he lent me his Maserati, which I took for a spin on the Autobahn and had a lot of fun. So that was a, a, a nice little perk of the last couple of days. Now, as I'm looking at your eyewear, I'm thinking of the discussion we had last night about this $13 billion industry, which you and Lapo are also, I guess, chipping away at in this new cross-fertilization. Can you tell us a bit about that? About eyewear? I, I, Lapo is for sure the expert on eyewear, but I definitely got... The model that Sam is using is a collaboration that we did actually a few years ago. Not a few, I would say one year ago for Karl Lagerfeld, actually. But if I need to speak about how you wear at this right. moment, uh, the, mic, the mic is not working, so it's not my fault. I'm sorry, but I, 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 I can look. We're talking about their big launch this week together. So this, this week, uh, actually, there was Opti Munich, which is the most important eyewear fair in Germany and one of the most important eyewear fairs in Europe, where we announced a uh, four-year partnership with Adidas Originals, where we will be doing view and sun for them, where we have, how do you say, had the opportunity, the possibility to work with the Adidas licensing and creative team in bringing to birth materials, ideas, products, which are unique in its industry, unique in terms of pace, because with the technology of digital printing, we will be able 
to bring uh, constantly and continuously ideas at a very fast pace. We have uh, overlooked, obviously, when you think about Adidas Originals, we have overlooked a tradition and innovation, which are core values of Adidas, but also core values of Italian independent. We have overlooked at all the different trends in terms of culture, urban, um, hipster, uh, skater, uh, and many others before even drawing the glasses that we did for Adidas. Because the reality is uh, the beauty of having worked with Sam, working with Adidas Originals, is the reality is uh, when people say that Germans and Italians are so different, I would say that Germans and Italians match perfectly. They match perfectly because with Adidas, I since work with them, I've never heard a no. I've never heard a non-possibility. The possibility to explore uh, to grasp new materials and new technologies that then you apply on eyewear or on the sneakers we did has always been, until now, a yes. And I have to say that this relationship is a relationship which is giving a lot to us, as I do hope and believe is giving a lot to them, but is flourishing to be something which is every time we do something, it's every time better and more. So let's talk about this idea of tradition and innovation, because in some sense they would seem like unlikely bedfellows. But here, what we want to explore is really this trifecta, this idea that you both share this level of speed and innovation, but it's also anchored in this amazing history and tradition. Could you tell us about Adidas as a quintessentially German brand and what it means to you now to break these barriers? What it enables you to do that you couldn't do before? It's really interesting. It's a really interesting time to work with Adidas and seeing what we can challenge and what we can change and what we can build anew. I think innovation is absolutely at the heart of the brand. I think building the highest performance product for the best athletes in the world has been like a core value and always will remain a core value. But what we're really seeing at the moment is this explosion of influence on, on sports and this collision between menswear, sportswear, lifestyle, music, fashion, and this big melting pot. And I think that the, the challenge and the fun at the moment is how do you combine all of these influences and still build very authentic, believable, honest Adidas product and try and build these future icons, future perfect products that are gonna sustain a lot of innov that are gonna sustain a lot of customization. And this is something that we were talking about a bit over the last couple of days that you know in a world where we wanna open up customization and an unlimited amount of creativity to consumers and let them really interact with what we build, building these perfect, authentic, honest, innovative products at the beginning becomes even more important, that the, you know, the single idea is incredibly strong, authentic, meaningful, and powerful. And, and I think this is something that we both share, this idea of building perfect things and then letting people engage with them and make them their own. It's what I love is this idea of the personalization where the authenticity comes from the consumer at the core. I, I, I wanted to uh, take on Sam. Um, a lot of companies, uh, that we see and hear speak about personalization and customization actually are playing with you consumers because they're giving you a box in which there's very few items that you can realistically customize. So the reality is that what Sam and I spoke about yesterday, but it's a real theme which I want to deploy on my projects and also in my companies, is if you have a strong core product, let's take examples. Uh, the Jeep Wrangler, another example, the Beetle, the Mini, the Fiat 500. A, a Stan Smith. Uh, a a Stan Smith, yeah. uh, more so than a superstar. Opening it to a real process of personalization and customization by the consumer is not something a brand should be afraid of. Many brands, uh, sadly, fear customization and personalization because they feel that they will lose the core or the essence of the strength of their brand. But if your brand is really strong or your product is strong, you shouldn't fear personalization or customization because it's an added value, it's an asset, and it's the best advertising campaign you can give to your company or to your product. 
Well, let's talk about the spectrum, though, if I may, because I'd love in a minute to have Lapo give us an idea of the highest touch element of customization in terms of the bespoke or tailored car or film or idea that you can create. I'd love to, for a second, just go back to that idea of digital and have Sam give us an idea of how quickly digital printing, 3D printing, is enabling me to really imprint my own idea of authenticity on an Adidas sure. product. So for example, the, the shoe that you're wearing was part of a program that we built where we could, we have an app, you can take a picture of anything that you want, immediately place it onto a shoe in, in, your, in your smartphone, direct shipment to, to the factory in Asia, and it ships directly to you within, I think, 15 days, 10 euro upcharge, something along those lines. And I think, new technology, we're really looking at being an enabler to empower consumers' creativity. We, we really believe in how creative can, people can be and that they want to create, they want to share, they want to build new things, they want to shape what their world looks like. And we really want to use new technology to enable that. So digital print has been part of it. I think 3D printing is going to be a huge part of us enabling consumers to interact and, and create on their own in a different way. I think the, the technology is the key enabler of it. But I think it takes a, a brave brand to do it. You have to believe, like Lap said, in, you, know, you have to believe in your core idea that it's strong and, power and powerful enough to survive multiple iterations, being taken in different color, different material, different shapes. But it's authentic and strong enough on its own. And when you're brave enough to do that, I think you can really celebrate the creativity of, of tomorrow's consumer, tomorrow's creator. That's fascinating. I think the other side of bravery is probably trust. So I think what we see here in your collaborations, regardless of the product, is this idea of the trust taking you further than you could go yourself. You've collaborated with some amazing uh, visionaries who are well beyond and above the Adidas core of authenticity of football. Can we talk about Kanye West? Can we talk about some of these collaborations? How do you maintain that spirit of authenticity for the athlete and yet also have such huge success with originals, with independent Italia collaborations, with rap stars who can take you to a different place? I think a lot of it is that we, you know, we believe in the, the power of, of the brand, the authenticity of the brand, and that this open source creation, working with, with lots of people, it's a very authentic idea to us. We've always worked with the best athletes in the world, and then maybe we're going to work with the best musicians in the world and the best fashion designers in the world. I think this idea of always working with the best and creating perfect product, I think it's a very authentic part of the, the brand values. What's the most perfect product you've created recently, Lapo, or an unrealized product that you have yet to create? I have many unreal products to realize. I'm actually very happy to have, I would say, in this room, two great creatives that I dearly and deeply respect. One is who's here close by me, which is Sam, and another one who's sitting there, which is Michele De Lucchi. And I would say the most important one for me at the moment is the one that I am thinking through with Michele De Lucchi because it's going to be, how do you say, the headquarters of my new company, Garage Italia Customs, which is... Uh, company who personalizes cars, boats, planes, uh, toys for boats. And in this sense, uh, with Michele and Carlo Cracco, which is a great Italian chef, Carlo will be doing the restaurant on top, and Michele is the one who will be reconfigurating, recreating, re-putting to shine a jewel of the past, which is a symbol of the 50s, done uh, uh, by the great CEO uh, in those years of any, uh, and uh, in the years of uh, the Italian economical boom, the launch of the Fiat 500, etc. And I would say that this project to me is a heart project, is an emotional project, is a new enterprise. And I do envision it as something which can be very, very big because when I look at the industry of motion, cars, boats, planes, motorcycles, etc., it's a 595 billion euro business with a constant growth, which you can see and perceive. And that goes from basics like wrapping, you can wrap a car, the can you tell us about that? Is this Rapping, I'll, I'll give you very simple. You, you can see in from any generation, you see people wanting to make their products theirs. And my company, Garage Italia Customs, offers a service 
where the dream of my consumer is my core goal. And whichever dream my consumer has, I am willing to work at any length to make it happen. And that's the reason why I took and asked to Michele De Lucchi to help me and support me in doing the structure, to Carlo to do the food, to the best artisans that we have in Italy who work actually with Ferrari, Lamborghini, Bugatti, and many other car companies. And at the same time, people who work in the boat industry who did the boats for Luna Rossa and Prada, people who worked for Gulfstream on the interiors of the planes. And I created a team of artisans which are unique, but also I created a platform where companies like Pirelli, Brembo, Lear, all the top companies in the world for, I would say, tires and cars, brakes in the best cars in the world, interiors, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to unite. So from Garage Italia Customs, they have the opportunity to express themselves. And I take an example, which is a very clear example, Pirelli. Pirelli is a multinational company who does black tires. I remember one month and a half ago, I went to see the CEO of Pirelli and I said to him, you know what, black is boring. If my consumers want, they have a red Ferrari, a blue Bugatti, and their dream is to have colored tires, as that was my dream. And it was a dream I had when I was working in Ferrari and Fiat 2, but uh, it didn't happen. One week after, I had the tires in my garage. We did the cars uh, for Star Wars, and we did the Stormtroopers cars with the colors of the robots. And uh, many other cars we did. The same with Brembo, which is number one in the world for brakes. They do Formula One, uh, they do the best Porsches, the best Ferraris, the best Lamborghinis. Whatever best product you have, they do, the number one in it. Uh, the reality, I said to them, if we think about a car which is, how do you say, camouflage, pinstriped, tartan, whichever material we want. Would you customize the brake according to the car? They said, yes. And those are multinational companies. So they see Garage Italia Custom as a hub who gives them the opportunity to push their creativity to a far broader and deeper level sometimes than major companies like BMW, Fiat Chrysler Automotive, uh, or Audi Volkswagen. Because realistically speaking, rules and regulations are far more complicated for them than for me. So the opportunity to be brutally creative and extremely creative in this industry, we do have it. And let's remember that the legacy and the history of Italians in the making of cars with Pineferina, Giugiaro, that sadly we lost to Giugiaro to the Germans and Pineferina to the Indians, has to show to us that we need to get back what belongs to us and we need to fight to get it back. All right, I gotta open up this fight. I'm looking at your amazing <laughs> Hublot watch that you've co-created and I'm feeling I need to give Sam, the Englishman, the chance to stand up for the Germans. So Sam, we have this amazing inspiration and passion and Lapos told us what it means to recreate this idea of made in Italy. What does made in Germany mean to you today? I think made in Germany is a very, very powerful statement. I think it means quality, it means high performance, and I think it's, um, it's definitely something that's important to, to the brand I work for in the future, to, to look into ways that we can do more of this. I mean, I don't want to give too much away and, and talk out of turn, but it's, it's definitely an important thing, and I think being a German brand is something that's amazing. Like, the, the legacy of, of, of Adidas, the highest performance sports brand in the world, a German brand, 60 years of authenticity, and also still building the most high-performance sporting products in the world. We launched today the world's first laceless football boots, so I knitted up a laceless, high-performance product for the best players in the world. It's a, it's a revolutionary thing, and we're going to continue to push the envelope. I think made in Germany doesn't need, mean to, need to mean staid and, and calm and sensible, and a lot of people talk about it like that, but I think it can be uber-creative, super challenging and really pushing the boundaries of, of what can exist. I think it's a, a, a really great thing to have on your, on your CV, on your, on your descriptors. What's the most exciting thing we're going to see in manufacturing? So if we look at made in Germany, there's been the traditional uh, German manufacturing in our mind and so much offshoring to Asia as well. What happens in the future as we have the third or the fourth digital revolution? What does that mean in terms of where your shoes are sold and made? 
I think the future of manufacture in, in, in footwear specifically is it's fascinating. I think we're, we're only just starting to uncover what the possibilities are. You look at knitted footwear, where we take a, an innovation from the garment industry and apply it to footwear, and it, and it explodes and becomes something really big and new. I think there are lots that we're going to learn from, from automotive, lots that we're going to learn from pharmaceuticals about how we can innovate and manufacture in different ways. And, and who knows where we put them in the future? You know, do we put them in Asia or Europe? But the world is ripe with opportunity for, for new manufacture. I mean, I think a lot of the job for, for me as a designer in that company is to take these new manufacturing and innovations, and something else that we talk about a lot is turning innovation into a story, building something with passion and, and love and believability from, an, from a raw innovation. I see a lot of that being the, the role of the designer. How do you package these things? How do you tell a story? How do you make it intuitive and believable and, and building things that people can fall in love with? I think that's a, another big part of it. And Lapa, how are you making people fall in love with Italy every day? We know the variety of projects you have on at the moment. You heard it here first in terms of this exciting collaboration that will take your projects to the next stage. In terms of giving back to the country, in terms of some of the less commercial projects, are there also directions in which life is taking you that may see you giving back in another way? So I will start by saying that as an entrepreneur, working on quality and beauty, Italy is probably the best country to work with. You know, I really, I, I, I have so many assets uh, in terms of craftsmanship, artisans, art, everything, that Italy is, how do you say, and has always been my major source of inspiration. Even though I'm a global Italian and a global citizen, and I travel all over the world, my biggest source of inspiration is Italy. My companies are called Italian Independent, Garage Italia Customs, and I promote, support, and push in every venture I do, and in every project I have, the quality, the skills, the abilities, and the beauties of my nation and of the people who are part of my nation. What are your rituals for creativity? There was a great book that came out that was the rituals of artists. And it had everything from Stravinsky standing on his head to clear his brain to Benjamin Franklin taking air baths, which was essentially walking around naked a lot of the time. When we look at you as these amazing creative individuals, I think there's a question out there as the world looks to innovation, to disruption, to creativity. Apart from these creative collaborations that you're seeking in the junctions, where do you get inspired? What is it that you read or listen to or ritualize that really gets you where you are today? I, I think for me, the thing that most builds creativity in, in my, my design area is being surrounded by the most keen, hungry, creative young designers in the world. And I think this energy of, of people who are willing to go that extra mile, stay the extra hour, read that extra bit more, cut and paste and assemble prototypes and, and challenge perception of what things can be, being surrounded by these people is what inspires me. And How's the environment for hiring them? Because many people in this room are worried about the brain drain or about the competition from the West Coast in terms of the best people going there. How are you finding it in your industry in terms of attracting and retaining the best talent? We have, I, I speak for Adidas Football now, and I think I can speak for Adidas Originals as well beforehand. The teams are amazing. Like the, the love that people have for the brand brings in an incredible design talent. And I think you see that in the, in the product portfolio that we've got right now. If you look to what's coming up in 2016 as well, and also the, the back half of 15, we're bringing innovation after innovation after disruptive product. And this is all driven by this incredible, talented group of designers that we've got in the company right now. I mean, it's a, it's a really amazing time to be there at the moment. It's a Lapo, honor. What gives you this amazing sprezzatore? What gives me this? But I would say, First, which might seem very awkward, for me, creativity happens at the best and at the peak when I'm in movement. So when I'm in a car, on a plane, or on a boat, I'm at the best, and I feel the happiest, and my mind turns much faster and is more creative. And then I would say, as a question that has been asked to me today, 
creativity can be at its peak in very sad situations as in very happy situations. When I travel around the world and I see people who do not have food or I see poverty and I see it at times also in my country, this is something who stimulates me to want to do better and want to do better for others. Because realistically speaking, it's great to create, it's great to do great products. But I forgot to answer to a question that you asked me before. I also take inspiration by helping and supporting others. And as an entrepreneur this year, I'll be launching my foundation, which is called LAPS, LAPS. There is going to be various laps which will have to take place in the foundation, but my foundation, instead of focusing on Africa, India, or other places, will be focusing only on Italy, and specifically on my country. And 60% uh, uh, will go to the south of Italy, and 40% to the north. The projects will be connected also to creativity and not only to pharmaceutical, to medical, and to youth. But there's always an element of creativity into them. There's always an element of, how do you say, energy into them. And, uh, and these things are, how do you say, uh, great energizers for everything I do because by having the opportunity now to do that, it's a great opportunity also for all the rest that I'm doing. Lapo, I think that's a beautiful place to end in terms of you heard it here first. I'm going to just also ask Sam in terms of looking into the future, uh, what you're most excited about in terms of that speed, in terms of that innovation. What will we see coming out uh, from your domain when we come back next year at this time? Yeah amazing things, many of which I can't really talk about. Now I'll get in way too much trouble. I mean, we're heading towards World Cup 18, which is going to be a, an explosion. Then we're really going to yeah. see the competition between be Italy one. and yeah. Germany heat up. You know, an, an explosion of innovation. It's going to be a, a great celebration of everything that we can do. But the thing I'm most looking forward to for the future is being able to empower creative communities and creative youth with customization and, and modularity as a platform that they can express themselves and engage with the products that we're building in a, in a brand new way and, and shape what their world looks like. I think that this is something that, that, that I feel is going to be an important part of, of product design in the future. You want, to, you want to take the brakes off and allow people to create and recreate and reshare and, and re-energize the product that you're building. And this is something that I find really motivating. I think it's Amazing. Be it's been a pleasure doing laps with you both. Thank you for inspiring us with your energy and enabling us to write our own design history every day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.